on AM 940 and WMIXSports.com. Cared for by Crossroads Community Hospital. The Saturday Sports Show has been recognized by the Illinois Broadcasters Association as one of the top radio programs in the state. That means the very best mix of local sports content is right here. From the powerhouse on Broadway, the Saturday Sports Show starts now. Another Saturday morning. Hard to believe it's finally here in a week where every day has felt like Saturday after the Christmas holiday. With all the basketball going on, we welcome you into the Saturday Sports Show. It's powered by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. It's what health care should be. That's Danny Zerwinski. I'm Chris Hugo. We are here until 10 o'clock today as we bring you the very best in high school basketball talk. We also talk some high school wrestling as well. A loaded lineup for you today. We'll talk with Scott Gamber. He is the head coach of Mount Vernon Rams basketball, as you probably know by now. We'll talk with Jeff Lonnan, head coach of Lady Rams basketball. Sean Doherty is going to stop by. We'll talk about the Lincoln Holiday Tournament in terms of Mount Vernon Rams wrestling. We'll talk with Andy Sloan. He is the head coach of the Benton Rangerettes, the Rangerette Christmas Classic going on this weekend, of course, at Benton Consolidated High School. We'll talk with Shane Witzel, head coach of the Woodlawn Cardinals. Cardinals, of course, are back in the semifinals at Sesterville Holiday Tournament for another year. We'll have their game on AM 940 today against Goreville. One fifteen is your pregame, One thirty your tip-off at the SVHT. We'll also talk with IHSA official Aaron Wright, of course, quickly becoming our officiating correspondent here from WMIX Sports. We'll talk with Aaron about what it's like to have to work multiple games in multiple sites over the course of the same day and into multiple days. We'll also talk about how a signing works at holiday tournaments. Uh, should be a good conversation with one of the better officials and clinicians in the area. Well, when you go to all these tournaments, and you, I did two tournaments yesterday, you go one tournament and you see a group of guys, you go next term, you see that group of guys, you see those guys leave and, and dressed in just a coat and they take off and go somewhere else. And, you know, And it's a lot of scheduling, a lot of changing, a lot of, well, this team's in it, I can't do this game, can you flop with me here because I got ties to this team. So it's a lot of changes. How many games is too many? Sometimes you see guys doing three, four, five games a day. How much is too much? So uh, it'll be a very interesting conversation to see it and hear it from the officials' eyes, some of the questions we will ask. And it's amazing how... The officials and, and radio can often tie in together. I actually had uh, an official on Thursday ask where we were, wondering, you know, didn't hear uh, you and I, of course, at Centralia, uh, wondered if we were doing any games, blah, blah, blah. I've heard that they question back a and lot. Forth. I've heard that question a lot this week. People just found out, I think. Yeah. You've been at Sessor doing Waltonville and Woodlawn, of course. I've, I was up at Effingham and T-Town yesterday. I've been to Sasser doing games. Went to Heron for Pinckneyville and SVW the other night. It was a very good girls basketball game. Glad I went there on Thursday night. And then yesterday went to Sasser, did the Waltonville and Woodlawn games, and then, of course, went over to Pinckneyville to visit. I'll go there again tonight for the trophy night. But, you know, a lot of people, uh, you know, hey, where you been? Where are you going? Aren't you supposed to be at Centralia? No, we're not. So the shock and awe is still brattling through people's minds of basketball fans here lately. Well, it is. And, you know, you think of terms. I, I actually took a personal day on, on Thursday, and I, I don't believe I did anything at all basketball-related. I tried to help out on Twitter, but you have such a firm grasp on that, do such a wonderful job with that, that it, there really wasn't uh, too much need for my assistance. But that's about all I did basketball-wise on Thursday and then really got in the full swing of it yesterday doing two Rams games from the Effingham T-Town uh, Christmas Classic, as it is being termed. And, of course, we thank T-Town and Effingham for their hospitality. We thank Cesar Valera High School for their hospitality, as always. And uh, any of the 15 tournaments that D.C. has ended up, I'm sure you've been treated very well. Uh, it's been nice. Uh, Cesar Valera has been very hospitable. Um, got my usual warm welcome last night at Pinckneyville and loved going no. there as well. Uh, Heron, I had a good time there. Mike Mooneyham talked with him, and, and, and you know he helped me out down there when I went and watched uh, SVW and Pinckneyville on game there. So... You know, it's a lot of long hours, a lot of people, uh, you know, and a shout out to everybody on Twitter that tweet and, you know, retweet us and tweet things and we retweet them as far as scores and updates and information. It's nice to see everybody getting along on Twitter and tweeting and retweeting and doing scores and whatnot and, you know, helping each other out because there's so many games, so many tournaments going on that, you know, Everybody can be involved on social media. Nice to chat with people. Uh, we had a guy listening from Pennsylvania yesterday to the Waltonville Century game. We had other people listening into the Woodlawn game via radio or internet, you know, from different places. So, with everybody everywhere in the world, it's nice to have everybody working together and tweeting and, and giving scores to each other and helping each other out. And the entities also, whether you're just social or if you're in the media, it's been great all week with a lot of people. 
you know, I was in awe last night, and I'm in awe right now. I was going to figure out exactly how we were going to read the WMIXSports.com scoreboard on the air this morning. And as I scroll down, it would probably take us the entire show to read our scoreboard. That is one massive scoreboard. You can find it at WMIXSports.com. Of course, we have results from most of the holiday tournaments of interest. Uh, full results from the Toyota Classic in Gibson County, and that, that's big news today. Uh, Tyra Bus two points away from the all-time IHSA scoring career, career scoring record. Yep. Three points to get it herself, and likely to happen against Princeton, Indiana tonight in Gibson County. 16 a game is pretty salty. 27 and a quarter, I saw. Yeah. And then, you know, here's the thing. Great score, phenomenal player, will go down in history. I'm still wondering the competition level over there. Wondering what's happening, you know. But 60 points is 60 points. I don't care who you are. It's like Kobe when he got 81. It's it's the Raptors. What do you do? So he got 81 here about seven eight years ago. But that's an impressive accomplishment, even with the three point line. There'll be people argue out there if you know Jay Scheidler had a three point line, he have 10,000 points, whatever. Chico Vaughn, same way. Um, you know. That's an accomplishment to get that many points in a game of 16. I get a feeling with the schedule they play, that won't be the last time she gets there by the end of the year. No, and I think that's the thing you take a look at is the game that was slated to be the toughest in the tournament for them was Princeton, and that's who they have uh, tonight. But I think with only being three points away from having the record to herself, that Tyra Buss is going to get it and become the all-time leading scorer in IHSA women's basketball history. Of course, she'll go to Indiana next year and – um, it's an impressive accomplishment. Now, obviously, your hats are our hats well, are off to Tyra Bus for that. Um, another big news of the week is that um, <laughs> Seton Academy find them, found themselves in the news earlier in the week. I saw that. Yeah, and it's amazing that they got into an issue, an altercation with another team from Chicago over the weekend. And uh, I know it's a new coach, a new situation, but their coach was suspended for a game. And uh, it's interesting that Seton Academy's back in the headlines and. I haven't heard a word about Harrisburg. I don't know where they've been, but uh, Seton Academy had to sit out a game, and there's going to be other repercussions as well from the IHSA. So interesting that Seton Academy, I think that was, to me, besides Tyra getting 60 in a game, to me that was the big story that kind of flew under the radar because it happened last weekend, Christmas, and then the tournament started that Seton Academy's coach got in trouble and had to sit out a game, and uh, some of their players got had issues with you know handling themselves in a w- mannerful way on the court. Well, and I saw that. I believe it was against Leo, if I remember correctly. And well, you know, there's the fir- another team with history. Well, the, yeah. First thing, first thing I had thought of was here we go again, and there's your coach's box point of point of emphasis. But well, I heard well, I said something yesterday. Speaking of coaches' boxes, well, I don't know where I know where it was. I won't say who, what teams. One head coach from one team was telling an official instead of talking about calls, yelling, or whatever, was telling the official, "Hey, so and so down there is out of his coach's box." Call it T. That's what we've gotten to here on December 28th is, hey, so-and-so's out of his box. Call T on him. Now that's what everybody's wanting to do. That's tremendous. Yeah, great, isn't it? Yeah. And that is where we have come in life is worrying about that. We need to take a break here on the Saturday Sports Show. We'll talk with Scott Gamber after, of course, talking about his team's one-on-one performance yesterday at the Teutopolis, excuse me, the Effingham Teutopolis Christmas Classic, the first annual edition, the first game against the T-Town Wooden Shoes. That was a 55-42 loss, but they rebounded with a 64-48 win over Matt Two, and that game was at Effingham. We'll clear it up for you after the break here on the Saturday Sports Show, powered by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. It's what health care should be. Back after these. A digestive problem can affect every area of your life, but now there's a specialist right here in town who focuses on digestive health. Mayo Clinic trained Dr. Teg Paul Atwal has opened the only gastroenterology clinic in Mount Vernon. Dr. Atwal treats acid reflux, gallbladder problems, inflammatory bowel disease, ulcers, and more. For your appointment with Dr. Atwal at Crossroads Specialty Clinic, call 618-241-9071. More Americans are on a move today than ever before. One of the most popular modes of transportation is the motorcycle. Motors motorcycles take us to our jobs, school, to the beach, and all around the country. If you're a bike rider, your Pekin Insurance Agency, Page Insurance on Crown View in Mount Vernon, wants to make sure you have the best insurance protection while you're riding. Ask about the money-saving auto cycle discount and the experienced driver discount, too. Call Page Insurance at 242-7000 today about motorcycle insurance from Pekin Insurance. 
Here's Jeff Schmidt for Schmidt Chevrolet of Mount Vernon. Business is really good. The new Silverado is selling very well. We're very pleased. It's a remarkable truck. It absolutely blows away the competition. The Dodge Ram and the Ford F-150 do not compare with this new truck. It's beautiful. It's laid out well. The seats are very comfortable. There is no other truck on the market that compares with the new Silverado. Schmidt Chevrolet of Mount Vernon, 3423 Broadway in Mount Vernon. And we welcome you back on the Saturday Sports Show, WMIX and WMIXSports.com, powered by Crossroads Community Hospital, cared for by Crossroads Community Hospital even. It's more than a hospital. It's what health care should be. Glad to have all of you aboard today on WMIX and WMIXSports.com. We'll get to it, our Twitter shout-outs in just a moment. Don't forget, you can follow us on the Twitterverse at WMIX Sports. Our first guest of the day, as always, is Mount Vernon Rams head basketball coach Scott Gamber. Rams went 1-1 one one in the inaugural Effingham to Topless Christmas Classic yesterday. Scott, good morning. Morning, how are you guys doing? You know, pretty good. I have a feeling that you're doing a lot better, and I know I start out every interview the same, but I have a feeling you're doing a lot better. Uh, Rams able to get a big win in the nightcap against Mattoon last night after a tough loss in the very, 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 very first game of the Effingham T-Town Christmas Classic. Yeah, you know, after, after the two games, I think there was a lot of positives yesterday. There's still a couple glaring negatives that, that we've got to got to get better at. But I mean I thought as a as a whole, I thought defensively I thought we did a better job in the guarding the post. I thought um, I thought in the second game our offense was a lot better. Probably the best it's looked as far as I thought we distributed the ball in that second game. I think that we had been in a little bit of a stretch where we had way too much one-on-one stuff. I thought we had a lot of um, any time we didn't get a first option, we would go to the, you know, just kind of break it off. And I thought last night uh, we did a lot better job of staying in our, our stuff the entire way through until we got what we wanted. Um, and like I said, I, just thought, I thought we distributed the ball a whole lot better. I think and that it kind of shows I thought we got the ball to Jake in a lot better spots um, than what we had been and I thought we did a lot better job in that second half defensively. The, the, the negatives is in the T-Town game, we let T-Town get into our defense way too easy. Um, we let some guys that were non-shooters consi- consistently beat us off the dribble. Um, we let their shooter have way too many good looks. And it, was just, it was just a frustrating game because I never felt like Early in the game, we got into any kind of a flow. I thought we gave up way too many easy baskets, and we still, with less than five minutes to go in the fourth quarter, held a lead and felt like we were in a really good spot because I felt like right here we struggled the whole game, we, we got the lead. And then to, to not just get beat, but just to, to get finish the game getting blown out like that was, was very hard to swallow, but was very proud of the guys for the fact that we lost the way we did, um, for them to be able to bounce back and get a win um, just a couple hours later. That, that was that was key for us because we lose that game, you know, it's it's a nightmare trying to, to get ready for the game today. At least we have a little bit of a positive. Now we, we get ready for somebody, we just don't know. I, I think looking back at the T-Town game, of course, you're, you're playing in the First game in this tournament in its history. You're playing at T-Town against T-Town. Uh, atmosphere obviously was overwhelming in favor of T-Town in terms of, of the energy level. And I, I think the biggest stat in that game, it isn't the crowd, it isn't the officials, it isn't who scored or who didn't. The fact that late in the game, the Rams had no offensive rebounds. And that has been one of the strengths this year for your team. And, and the fact that that is just a glaring omission from, from the score. The scorebook yesterday is the fact that late in the game, very few offensive rebounds to be had for the Rams. Yeah, and I think I think some of that was the fact that we were were taking some bad shots and we were taking some quick bad shots. Nobody was in position to offensive rebound. When you come down and before anything even happens, you shoot it. No, nobody's in place there, and um, I, I, I think that was a big key of it. And, um, 
I thought a lot. I thought T Town did a good job of um, frustrating us with um, their physical play. I thought you know they they did a good job of making our offense start a lot further out than where we wanted it to start, and they're they're a tough team to play because they they just keep coming at you, keep coming at you, and and they wore us down. And that's you know after the game on kind of mad at our kids about, hey, you know, we, we got to show a lot more toughness. We can't let another team get us out of what we do um, the way that T-Town did that game. you got you got to keep fighting, keep competing. you got to, you got to, you've got to set the tempo and the pace where you want it to be. And I thought we let T-Town completely dictate everything about the game from start to finish. Well, and then you have the tough transition into a second game at 6 o'clock after losing the 2 o'clock game. What do you say to your kids after a loss like that to get them amped up uh, for a game in another gymnasium in the same tournament against a completely different school? Well, I mean, it was kind of two different things. And here, what was kind of tough was, you know, after the game, it would have been nice to remember – we play again in two and a half hours, but your emotion and, you know, got, got a little fired up and about how we didn't compete at the end. But what was, what was good was we stayed there, we watched a half, got away from it for just a second, and then we could kind of regroup. And we, we went to Effingham High School and tried to go over Mattoon stuff and spent probably a little more time going over our stuff, what we were doing wrong. Uh, like I said, in a big, you, you, we've got to attribute a lot of this to our kids because they they had already played a game. They were obviously very disappointed that they lost. And we had a little bit of a slow start against Mattoon, and I thought we were going to be in big, big trouble. But we eventually hit a couple shots, and I think that kind of got us going a little bit, and that kind of picked up our defense. and. And we were able to ride a, a nice end of the second quarter and then a really big third quarter to a win. Well, and then you talk about the, the big third quarter. Shikari Hawkins had a big third quarter last night. Fitz had a big game. Pike had a big game. You had five in the book, three in double digits. And all in all, as far as the Rams' performance last night, sets up nicely. I, I think you wish you know, you could have had a similar performance against T-Town that first game. You set your own destiny right. tonight. Definitely. But, but nothing says in the in the way that high school basketball has played out this year and how crazy some of the results have been that maybe Matt Toon sneaks in and gets a win against T-Town at 11 o'clock today, forces a three-team tiebreaker, which should go to free throw percentage. Now, I know you only got to shoot three free throws in that first game compared to 19 for the home team, but taking all of that aside, you know, who, who knows what may happen? It, it is, and what's, what's interesting is, is um, they told us last night, as I'm sure they told you, that the tiebreaker would go to free throw percentage. And that's what both the, the T-Town guy that I talked to that's kind of in charge of the term and the, the Effingham AD said, but, for, but in the program, it says that it's point dif- differential is the first tiebreaker. So, I don't know. Um, any difference? But you're right. But you're right. Uh, any difference today? You played two games yesterday, second day of a tournament. You only have one game. Is that kind of an odd feeling this time of year for you? It is a little bit of an odd feeling that we're, that we're not playing two, two today on the, on the last day of the tournament. But um, what's, what's odd for, for us and I'm sure for you guys and for our fans and cheerleaders and players is um, not knowing when we play and not knowing who we play. We will not know when we play until, you know, probably about 12.30. Um, I'm assuming we're going to be playing at 6.30. Um, I'm assuming that we're going to play Chicago Rabbi, but we don't know those things, so um, we're not going to... Normally we would like to come in today about noon, practice for an hour, hour and a half, uh, go over the stuff, let the kids leave, go get something to eat, relax, and then come back and get on the bus. We can't do that today because if we come in at noon, we won't know who we're playing. So we're not going to come in till three. We're going to um, we're going to just come in at three, go over their stuff, and then get on the bus and leave, which is not ideal. But 
we you know that's the only way we'll know who we're playing. We won't know who we're playing probably until know, two two fifteen. <laughs> that, that's kind of odd. Uh, kind of odd, but we know our final question. I think I already know the answer to this. Our social media question of the week this week is, what is your favorite concession stand food or drink to have at high school basketball games? Um, I, I mean, I, uh, popcorn. See, I knew it. be kind of the easy one. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. That's cause it, um, I'm always kind of scared to eat anything else, but... Um, I love, uh, what is it, Carbondale? They have the, uh, what is that like, that taco in a bag? Carbondale has a little bit. You guys ever had that at Carbondale? I have. They also have pizza. They actually have, you know, a pretty good concession stand going on there. And I know if Marvin had the space and all the amenities, he could probably top that here in Mount Vernon. But, oh, that's that's pretty amazing what all they offer. It is. It is. So that's, if, if, I, if I'm going, like, scouting or... As a fan, then the taco in a bag would be my favorite. But if I'm coaching, then just popcorn. It's probably a good decision if you're coaching. <laughs> probably. Yes. yes. <laughs> Scott, best of luck to the Rams today. Of course, we're for now, probably could assume a 6.30 game at Effingham. But we'll do our best to let everybody know what time uh, the Rams will play and whom just as soon as we know that information. Good luck tonight. All right. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. That's Scott Gamber, head coach of the Mount Vernon Rams. And, of course, we'll take a break on the Saturday sports. When we come back, we'll talk Rams wrestling with Sean Doherty. Right now, they're sixth at the Lincoln Holiday Tournament. You can find out the team results from the Lincoln Holiday Wrestling Tournament at WMIXSports.com. This is the Saudi Sports Show. It's cared for by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. It's what health care should be. Back after these. This is Chase Landers from Landers Collision Centers. We want to wish all of you a very happy and special holiday season. We also hope that you'll be safe when traveling to see your loved ones. In the event that something unfortunate happens in your travels, we're fully equipped to handle your vehicle and get it back on the road faster and like it rolled off the showroom floor. That may sound cliche, but at Landers Collision Centers, we believe in maintaining the highest level of integrity and the best quality repairs in the collision repair industry. We quickly process insurance claims and will gladly offer you a car to drive while we restore yours. The last thing anyone needs is to worry about transportation around the holiday season. This is Chase Landers with Landers Collision Centers. If you need us, just give us a call at 1-888-LANDERS. That's 1-888-LANDERS. On behalf of all of our staff, have a happy and safe holiday season. Thank you for your continued trust. We look forward to serving you for years to come. Complete. That's the Orthopedic Center of Southern Illinois with a full sports medicine clinic, state-of-the-art MRI, a spine care team that focuses on pain management, arthroscopy specialists offering total joint replacement, hand surgery, and complete rehabilitation services. Doctors Chow, Hool, Ahn, Kowalski, Freehill, and Smith stand ready to serve you today with offices in Mount Vernon and Centralia and satellite offices in Benton and Nashville. Find out more online at orthocenter-si.com. Hi, this is Joe David Cummins, President of Community First Bank. Now is a great time to move your account to Community First Bank. With our new one account offering the highest interest rate in the market, free checking, and CD specials delivered by people you know and trust, why would you not bank with the market leader in Jefferson County? We offer five locations with seven ATMs and have been serving the Jefferson County market since 1906. Stop in and see why our bank is the fastest growing bank in Jefferson County. Community First Bank, welcome back to Personal Banking, member FDIC. And we welcome you back on the Saturday Sports Show, WMIX and WMIXSports.com. Chris Hugo with Danny Jarwinski, cared for by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. It's what health care should be. Next guest on the program is the head coach of Mount Vernon Rams Wrestling. He is Sean Doherty. Coach, good morning. Good morning, guys. How you doing? Pretty good. Team looks to be doing pretty well. I was able to see the results. We stuck them on WMIXSports.com, sitting in sixth place as a team, I believe, after the first day up there at Lincoln. Yeah, yeah, the uh, team actually were doing really good. Uh, I mean, you got 14 weight classes, but you only brought 11 uh, to be sitting in uh, sixth place with uh, the competition that's up, that's up here is uh, pretty good. And like I told the kids uh, last night, I was like, you're only five points out from uh, third place and getting the trophy. So hopefully we can put something together here this morning and uh, hopefully bring back some. 
Hey, I got to think about this. I'm looking at the teams listed above. It's not like you're wrestling teams that are all smaller. You're wrestling some as big as, if not bigger than you are this week or this weekend at Lincoln. Yeah, that was one of the reasons why we got into this tournament was because some of the, you know, a lot of the teams we see in our sectional, we don't see them all year, and uh, but they're here at this tournament. So we thought this would be a great opportunity for our guys to kind of gauge how they're doing and see how things are going and where they need to really concentrate on uh, in the month of January and uh, make that final push towards the end of the month and get us ready for uh, the conference uh, duels and uh, regionals and hopefully I'll keep going. How nervous does a wrestling coach get around the holidays when all this food's been being eaten <laughs> by wrestlers? Oh, it's, it's horrible. I'm telling you right now. I'll tell you the one thing, though, that's what I was talking to my assistant coach uh, this morning. I was like, you know, teams passed. I have you know, haven't slept, you know, all during the night of a tournament, worried about whether or not they're going to make weight or These guys are actually pretty responsible. We've got some great captains uh, that they make sure people are doing what they're supposed to be doing. And uh, surprisingly, uh, it's hard to believe, we actually, everybody made weight uh, both days and really didn't have any issues, no drama. So I, I figure that's a win as far as I'm concerned. Well, and really, when you take a look at how the Rams have done this season, we've seen some notable wins along the way. And, you know, talking about beefing up your schedule to see some of the teams that are going to be in your sectional, seems like obviously taking the reins from Coach Tickner, who did a, a marvelous job getting the program off the ground. You're doing a great job of keeping it going and just beefing up the schedule. I think that's going to pay off, obviously, like it would in most sports uh, when it comes time for the postseason. Oh, yeah. And, you know, that's one of the things I keep telling my kids is, like, you know, if you really – you know, it depends on what your goals are, and everybody has different goals at the start of the year, whether it's to be a 500 wrestler or to be a state champ. But to be able to get to those spots, you've got to wrestle tough kids. Um, you know, you can beat up on, on uh, lesser opponents all year long, and you come down to the end of the year, and then you're wondering why you're not winning. Like, well, you know, <laughs> you've got to, you got to know, and you've got to realize what's out there, what kind of competition's out there, and uh, step up your game. Well, and of course, taking a look at the results from yesterday, having some, seen some of the individuals, and you said the 14 weight classes, you've taken 11 boys up there, and, and really, from, from having seen, there's there's a lot of wins on that scoreboard from yesterday. Yeah, I'll tell you what, it was one of the nice things, uh, you know, first round, we got a lot of wins, we had a lot of pins, which uh, that ha we didn't have issues with this year, and I'm thinking maybe we've uh, got that corrected, um, and that helped, that gives you bonus points. Uh, for your team, and uh, we've still got two kids that are in the uh, championship bracket uh, part of it, Chase Vosberg at uh, 152 and uh, Tristan Penrod at 220. Uh, those kids, if they win this morning, they'll be uh, wrestling in the finals for first. Uh, we've still got a bunch of kids that are uh, in the hunt for uh, third place. Uh, we've got uh, Tommy Vosberg at 106. He's doing a good job to do, uh, yesterday. Uh, 113, we got uh, Josiah Fitzgerald, the second-year wrestler, uh, who's done a, a marvelous job, and he just keeps keeps winning. You know, that's all I can ask, even if it's ugly, that's fine. Let's just keep keep uh, pouring it on. Uh, at uh, 120, Quentin Favors, uh, he's uh, had a good tournament so far. He's starting to figure some things out. Um, I'm just going down my list in my head. Uh, 145, uh, Brandon Rutherford, a uh, freshman, uh, IKWF kid. Uh, but he's really improved a ton. Um, and then uh, 195, uh, Alex Hopkins, uh, who, I'll tell you what, the last two weeks has just turned it on, and he's probably been the most pleasant surprise of uh, all of them, as far as I'm concerned, just because he goes out there and you think, oh, man, I don't know, this is going to be a tough one, and he ends up pinning the guy, and you're like, well, okay, well, maybe it wasn't that, <laughs> that big of a deal. But, you know, I mean, he just really improved his craft and what he's trying to get accomplished, and I look for things out of all of them today. Of course, it looks like that Hopkins had the quickest pin yesterday in 43 seconds, but I, I noticed looking at the individual results, decisions, you know, you'd have a 10-4 decision or an 8-4 decision. How do how does the decision actually work in high school wrestling whenever they don't all add up to the same number, I guess, of decision makers? How does that work? Uh, you mean for, like, team points? Well, I'm, I'm looking at, like, you know, I see that Thomas Vosberg lost by decision 7-6. Um, you know, Fitzgerald's won a decision 4-3. to three. How are there, why, why are those numbers so different? How come they're not the same 
in each individual match, like 7-6 or 4-3 or 7-1? Well, it just uh, depends on what uh, what kind of uh, points you end up uh, gathering. You know, uh, takedown is worth two points. And if you've got a kid that can uh, is really good at uh, taking down uh, another kid on his feet, uh, it may be one of those things you may end up with a high-scoring affair where it may end up like, you know, 12-10 or something like that. It kind of tells you that, man, they were on their feet a lot or else they gave up a lot of back points. But it sounds like it was uh, kind of a, a back-and-forth battle. Whereas if you got like a 4-3 score, obviously you know, both guys were pretty evenly matched. Um, nobody could take down the other guy very easily, and it was kind of nip and tuck through the whole thing. And, yeah, those scores, they can be really indicative of uh, what kind of a match was uh, being held between those two guys. And just like with uh, Fitzgerald, that was one that was a, um, you know, uh, an escape here, which would get you one point, or a takedown here, which would get you two, could decide the match. Nice. So it makes a heck of a lot more sense to me now. Makes yeah. a, a whole lot of sense. Of course, the WMI yeah. Sports social media question of the week this week, Coach, I know you're busy today. I know you guys wrestle at 9 o'clock. Uh, is what is your go-to food at the concession stand? If you're in a gym, or in this case, or if you're 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 at a wrestling tournament, what's your go-to food? Go-to food. Well, I'll tell you right now, I'm a diabetic, and um, unfortunately, sweets are definitely my uh, my uh, kryptonite, so to speak. So uh, if they've got donuts. I'm definitely having at least one. The only good thing is now I've learned to uh, moderate myself, so I'll just have one. It's tough to have that willpower sometimes. I know even when it's health-related, it's always tough to be able to fight the urge oh, to go for a sweep. Yeah, yeah, I don't have any. I don't have any. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, that's one of those deals as wrestling coach. You can't go out and eat donuts in front of the wrestlers. That wouldn't be fair. Oh, no, I do. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes that's even better motivation. Coach, like I said, I know you're busy right. today. We appreciate you for taking the time for us this morning to get to talk some holiday wrestling. Good luck to the Rams today. Thank you. That is Sean Doherty. He is the head coach of Mount Vernon Rams Wrestling, doing a phenomenal job and probably one of the more patient uh, individuals when it comes to, in terms of explaining how the sport works to people like myself who don't understand enough about it but are trying to learn. And Rams Wrestling is something you have to, to take in, and I know that I say that, and yet I haven't been able to make it to a match this year, but they're doing great things with Rams wrestling this year. Uh, we do need to take a break here on the Saturday Sports. When we come back, there are plenty more talk. You'll want to stick around after the break. Saturday Sports Show is cared for by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. It's what health care should be. Back after these. Mount Vernon is home to many wonderful people and things, and that includes quality cardiac care from Dr. Ruzek Ibrahim. A skilled cardiologist, Dr. Ibrahim's training and scientific accomplishments have earned his designation as a fellow of the American College of Cardiology. His services range from preventative care to the treatment of advanced heart conditions. For an appointment with Dr. Ibrahim at Crossroads Specialty Clinic, call 241 241- one ninety seventy one, or visit in person at 4113 South Water Tower, Mount Vernon. We've all had dreams of being king or queen. Now's your chance. Hi, Roy Schmidt, Lincoln dealer at Ford Square, Mount Vernon. The 2013 Lincoln MKX makes the perfect throne. With all of its splendor and majesty, the 2013 Lincoln MKX continues to be the king of the crossovers. With heated and cooled front seats, panoramic vista roof, and available ambient lighting, you'll wish you would have been driving the MKX sooner. It truly is fit for a king and queen. Drive away in brand new luxury when you trade in any 1995 or newer vehicle and pay only $35,625 plus tax, title, and destination on a 2013 Lincoln MKX. With this amazing deal, our remaining selections won't last. Hurry and see one of our sales associates at Ford Square Mount Vernon or view our selection of Lincoln Luxury online at FordSquare.com and find us on Facebook. And we welcome you back on the Saturday Sports Show, powered by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. It's what health care should be. Our WMIX sports social media question is on social media for you find it on facebook facebook.com slash wmix sports as always you can hit us up on twitter also at wmix sports paraphrasing of course i am right now what is your go-to food or snack or what have you 
at the concession stand, whether it be in a gymnasium or maybe a football stadium, wherever, any sport, doesn't matter. You go to the concession stand, what are you getting? D.C., what are you getting? Sweet tarts. I mean, high school basketball, If your your concession stand has to have sweet tarts. That's my thing. I got you. Bottle uh, of cold skis go a long way, too. Yeah, it does. Let's see. I don't do soda anymore. So that's no longer a go-to option. I usually go for Sour Punch straws if they have any or something sour, uh, which is probably dumb right before broadcasting a game because I'm probably gonna because I do it like right before. You're smart. You get whatever you're getting when you get there, and then I I I basically just can't find a word that's not offensive or an expletive here. But I basically just goof off for a little bit uh, once we're all set up and ready to go, and then I forget about getting anything from the concession until a little bit later on. So mine would probably be Sour Punch straws. And I don't do popcorn anywhere. I know I've had Marvin's popcorn here in Mount Vernon. It's pretty good. It's great, actually. But I'm just not a popcorn guy before a game because odds are if I'm at a game, I'm getting ready to broadcast. And the one time I had popcorn before a game, I actually coughed and hacked and all of that the entire time from some loose kernels. So I vowed never, ever, ever, ever again. Although I will eat other people's popcorn if the game is over. I've been known to do that. Kind of a mooch in terms of concession stand. <laughs> No arguments. <laughs> no. <Nope. laughs> but that is our social media question, and we hope you'll participate in the discussion. WMIX Sports on Twitter and Facebook. Check us out. Give us a find. Give us a follow. Give us a like, whatever you choose to do in that. A busy day for WMIX Sports. Not quite as busy as we are hoping it would be, but the Woodlawn Cardinals will play in semifinal action against the Goreville Black Cats at Cesar Valier today. That will be a one fifteen pregame on AM 940 and WMIXSports.com. We'll talk with Shane Wetzel later in the broadcast. But, D.C., you've been at the SV Holiday Tournament. You've, of course, you've been at Pickneyville. You've been at Heron. But at SV, there's been quite a few good matchups, and, and seeds aren't going to play out. No. Um, very interesting last night that Cesar Valera knocked off Sparta. I know they had a lot of energy and momentum after winning the Trico Tournament, and Cesar Valera knocks him off the mystique of the Devils on their home floor in that night's quarterfinal game. Johnston City had a nice run beating Marissa Colt from New Athens, knocking out the Cokia side there. Um, Johnston City SV tonight, a very interesting matchup. Johnston City from the east of the BDC, SV from the west. That'll be an interesting matchup tonight of uh, those two teams. You know, on the upper side of the bracket, of course, Woodlawn knocked off ZR. ZR was 10-1 and coming in. Finished second in the Christopher Turkey Tournament to the host Bearcats, and ZR played very well, but Woodlawn knocked them off. So the one seed survives and goes to play, guess who, Goreville. Survives a triple overtime thriller with Christopher yesterday. So Goreville, you know, here's the thing about Goreville going into this. Do How much energy are they going to have left after playing an extra quarter and a half of basketball yesterday in a highly emotional up-and-down game? Number two, Woodlawn has been the, um, how should we say this, better than Goreville than uh, most of Kryptonite, I guess. Kryptonite better than Goreville. So in the last few years at the SV tournament. So, you know, Woodlawn's had their way with them. Can Goreville, you know, will remember that, and they'll be fired up and ready to go, but they're going to have to, you know, how much energy will they have when that third and fourth quarter comes around after that big game yesterday, three games in three days <laughs> at that level. Um, you know, in, in Waltonville gave Goreville. See, Goreville's had... Two games back-to-back -back where they have had to expend a ton of energy. Uh, they had to really battle for 32 minutes to beat Waltonville, who played very well on opening day. Then they had to expend the energy yesterday playing you know, another extra quarter and a half to get by Christopher. So they have really had to play two very difficult games. Goreville has to get to the semifinals. So, you know, the other side, the first game this morning... As Steelville plays in that first game. I'm, I'm really impressed with Steelville. I know they got knocked off in the first round by Ziegler, but they found some things yesterday. I'm really impressed with them. And then, of course, the second game today is ZR Christopher. They're going to play four times this year, twice in tournaments and then twice in a regular season. And then, of course, Woodlawn Goreville. So great, great uh, matchups. Of course, Century plays Steelville this morning, and height their left-handed guard is pretty good. All three matchups today in that opening session at Cesar Valier, very good matchups at those three games. Um, at night, the Johnson City Cesar Valier, the highlight of the evening, and uh, New Athens Sparta could be interesting depending on where their mindsets are playing in the fifth place bracket the game before. But really intriguing Johnson City Cesar matchup tonight down there at Cesar Valier. Well, and it is, and I think that's a very intriguing tournament. Of course, you'll be able to see Cesar, or excuse me, Woodlawn and Goreville today. 
We'll have that for you on AM 940 and WMIXSports.com. All in all, expecting probably another great matchup there. I know Goreville and, and Waltonville could kind of be deceiving in terms of the Black Cats, but the Black Cats had a pretty good tournament at their tournament, losing only to AJ, if I'm not mistaken, to, to open the season. But all in all, should be a great day of basketball there, down there at SV. We're hoping for a great day of basketball at Effingham and T-Town today as well. We'll have the Malvern and Rams tonight whenever they may play. As of right now, going for the assumptive 6.30 tip-off 615 pregame tonight on the fm and wmixsports.com with audio only uh, that would be for a third place trophy uh, assuming that t-town beats mattoon but if mattoon beats t-town it's gonna be a bird of a different feather if that's the case so we'll see what happens throughout the day you can stay up to date on twitter and on facebook as well should be an interesting day of basketball all across mm-hmm. the land and of course we'll have a game monday if woodlawn wins they'll play at seven at night if they lose they'll play at three on monday so Woodlawn trying also for a four-peat at Cesar Valera, trying to get a four years in a row uh, championship. Harrisburg also, I believe, going for a fourth in a row at El Dorado today in their semifinal matchup. So uh, Harrisburg had to get by Heron last night. So uh, two teams, Harrisburg and Woodlawn, looking to four-peat, and they play each other January 7th at Woodlawn. Thinking. Yeah. We have a busy, January busy stretch crazy. of games yeah. coming up, don't we? Yeah. Rams are at home Friday, next Friday against Altoff. Saturday is girls basketball in the afternoon, Woodlawn at Wayne City, the 4th, and then Heron at Woodlawn on that night. I know there's a game on the 6th. I know there's a game on the 7th. Mount a- Vernon's at home. 8th is dicey Eighth right is now. 8th is questionable. We don't have anything. Uh, the, you know, here's the changes. Um Woodlawn will host Heron on the 4th, not the 18th, because SIU moved the shootout from December with the snow to January 18th and forgot to tell Heron. So Heron had to move Woodlawn to the 4th. Now that means Woodlawn is going to play Weber, I believe, either on the 16th or the 18th, something like that. Modern day of the 18th. Modern day is the 18th. Weber is the 16th. And Waltonville plays Christopher at a different time at the SIU shootout on the 18th. So, I mean... uh, Changes abound with the snow and conference games having to be gotten in. And, you know, Waltonville goes to North Clay on January 4th in the evening now to make up the game that was snowed out. So, uh, got to keep up to date. We're going to be everywhere making a lot of miles here in the next couple of weeks. We are going to be everywhere. We're going to go to Benton here in just a moment as we talk with Andy Sloney as the head coach of the Benton Rangerettes. Rangerette Christmas Classic will wrap up on Monday, but there's two games per team today. We'll talk about that with Andy after the break here on the Saturday Sports Show, powered by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. It's what healthcare should be. Back after these. I'm Jeremy Pearson with a look at your next rad weather. Mild today with sun and patchy clouds, high 55. Mostly cloudy tonight, low 33. Rain not too far from the south and east. Mostly cloudy, breezy, and colder tomorrow, high 38. But temperatures will fall in the afternoon. And Monday is looking mostly sunny and very cold, high 22. Next round weather from WMIX, Mount Vernon, Illinois. Dig in with full contact coal miner training at Red Lake College. Learn in our new 20,000 square feet coal mine training center. Use real equipment like continuous miners and power sitters. And check out the new mine rescue and fire safety training tunnel. Associate degree and occupational certificates available. We're full contact, hands-on coal mining. Real equipment, real live all the time. What are you waiting for? Call 618-437-5321 and get started. The health of your kidneys has a big impact on your overall health, affecting everything from your blood pressure to your bones. And if you ever have a kidney problem, Dr. Kangura is here to help. Dr. Kangura trained at the Mayo Clinic and specializes in conditions ranging from kidney stones and uncontrolled high blood pressure to chronic kidney disease. Dr. Kangura sees patients at Crossroads Specialty Clinic. For an appointment, call 618-241-9071. And we welcome you back on the Saturday Sports Show, WMIX, WMIXSports.com, cared for 
by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. It's what healthcare should be. Our next guest is the famed head coach of the Benton Rangerettes basketball team hosting the Rangerette Christmas Classic this weekend. He is Andy Sloan. Andy, good morning. Good morning. How are you guys doing? Pretty good. I imagine you're probably exhausted. You guys run your own tournament down there. The Rangerette Christmas Classic going into its second day today. Uh, a very good girls basketball tournament, if I may say so myself. Yeah, you know, I think uh, you have Carterville and Hamilton County, you know, both coming in with just a, a couple of losses between them and Goreville the same. Um, you know, you got a good tournament and then uh, finish it out with Benton, Marion, and, and Trico, who have uh, probably all been up and down a little bit this year. But um, good good competitive tournament. And, uh, uh, you know, after day one, we had some good games, and I'm looking forward to, uh, to day two and day three. Day number two, you get double session yesterday. You get a double session today. That's four games in two days. That's quite a lot for everything going on there at the high school for that tournament. Yeah, you know it is. And uh, a few years back, we had eight teams, which is probably um, a little better than, than what we have now with six. But with so many tournaments going on, um, you know, it, it's tough to find a team or two to get back to eight. And with six, you're kind of forced to, to go around robbing. Uh, route and um, you know the way we do it is we go two two and one and uh, you know like you said it's a lot it's a lot of basketball and uh, you know not only just physically but mentally for those kids and uh, I think for the coaches as well and uh, you know like you said it's early mornings and late nights and uh, back and back and I guess thankfully we get a day off tomorrow and then we'll go back at it on Monday. Playing in the East Gym, you realize it. I realize it. Do the girls realize the historic significance of the people who have? Put on some tennis shoes and played in that gym, both on the boys and girls side. You know what? They probably they probably haven't. Um, most of our kids, you know, probably don't even know the, the boys ever played down there. And uh, you know, a lot of history uh, in that gym, going back to to, to Rich Heron and, and the teams that he had in there. And um, you know, I hear some stories all the time about different games down there and where they had bleachers set up. And uh, I've seen pictures of the of the crowds, and it was just unbelievable. And, um, you know, a lot of people don't like to play down there because it's, you know, a little bit smaller and um, there's not a lot of room on the sidelines. But, uh, you know, I, I think it's a good, good home court advantage for us. And uh, we enjoy playing down there. And, um, you know, for a girls' tournament, I think it's pretty good because obviously they don't get the draw typically that a boys' tournament does. And if you play that thing in the rich turn uh, gymnasium, you may, it may look like there's 20 people in the stands. So um, I think it works out well for us down there. After this week, after this weekend for the Rangerettes, what's the schedule in the second half in 2014 look like? Well, we've got a make-up game with uh, West Frankfurt on January 4th. That'll be a big conference game. They're in our regional also, so uh, you know that'll have maybe some seating significance. And uh, then we, I think we're on the road a little bit. I think we go to Murphy and uh, and to Massac. Then we'll uh, hit the Carterville tournament. Uh, we'll get five games down there over uh, Saturday, Wednesday, Saturday. So. Um, you know, it's real busy. I think I looked, and we have about uh, 14 or 15 games in January. We've got about 12 practices, but seven or eight of those are like a day before games. So, um, you know, we kind of got to get better on the court in games and uh, not a lot of practice time to, to go back and do things and change things, put things in. So um, it's going to be a busy January for us. How do you feel about hosting your own Christmas tournament? Do you, do you, is it exciting to be able to have a little bit of control over where you play for the holidays and be able to have five games in your own gymnasium? Does that do you feel that kind of helps things going into a busy January and February? You know, it probably does. There, I, there's some positives and then there's some negatives to it. Uh, you know, it, you just, there's so much to do uh, from paying the referees to, to sitting in the stats, the, the scorebook to the to the southern to. Uh, you know, dealing with your concession stand. But, you know, on the other uh, other side of that thing is you don't have to get on the bus five times. Um, you get to play five home games. You know, if you don't play those five home games, you know, maybe we play eight home games all year. So it gives us a lot more time at home. And, uh, you know, from the coach's side of things, just as far as handling your team, I like it. And then from the maybe the more responsibility side of things, it's, it's, uh, it's a little more than what you're normally used to. But it all works out. And, uh and I think it's nice to host your own your own tournament. Um, like I said, for the kids, they they're used to your locker room and the way we do things there. And you know, we've got access to our to our film and classrooms and the and the boys' gym. We can go down and walk through like we did last night before we played Carterville. We you know go down and walk through about an hour before we play and, and do some things. And, so that helps. And uh, 
you know, somebody asked me not too long ago, do you want to, would you like to, you know, look to go somewhere else for, for Christmas? But, you know, I think I like it, the kids like it, and uh, hopefully we can continue to, to host that thing. Games today with Trico and Hamilton County, two distinctly different teams going different directions. Well, how do you keep your team focused on the first thing against Trico, not to look ahead to Hamilton County, kind of a rival to the east for Benton? Yeah, you know, that's, that's going to be tough. Uh, you know, first of all, we played Carterville last night, and, you know, it's a, it's a tie game with 40 seconds to go, and um, they go up two, and we go down and, and hit one free throw, so now we're down one, and then we had to foul and got it to three, then we had to look at a three and miss, and uh, they end up winning by five. Uh, but, you know, I think that took a lot out of us. Uh, you know, one, one of our better kids had to battle some cramps last night, and I don't know how she's going to be this morning, but, you know, like you said, uh, we've got to be ready to play Trico, and, uh, you know, you, you've got to respect everybody you're going to get beat. And, uh, you know, we're, we're going to try to do some things against them early. And, uh, you know, if everything goes well, we can get a lead and, and rest our kids a little bit. That would be nice. But if you let a team like that hang around, they're going to be dangerous. You know, what happened to Marion last night? Uh, you know, Marion kind of was in control of that game until late, and Trico just kind of hung around and hung around and ended up winning that game. But, uh, you know, we got to get through Trico first, kind of one game at a time. And then uh, hopefully we can get our kids home and off their feet a little bit. And then Hamilton County uh, tonight, they're playing really well. And like you said, kind of a rival of ours. I feel like every time we play them, it's a good game. We split with them last year. And, uh, you know, right now, I don't know, they're probably high 12-1 and one or so with their only loss to Sessor. And so they're playing really well. Clint's got them playing well. Uh, they did a good job with them over there. And we'll have our hands, hands full tonight. I think it'll be a lot like the Carterville game last night. So, uh, you know, with it being the fourth game in, in, in 24 hours or so, it's, it's going to be tough on them, tough on us, but uh, hopefully we'll be ready to play. Of course, a pretty good tournament so far. I mean, any surprises? Of course, Hamco's 2-0, and Carterville's 2-0, and your Rangerettes are 1-1 and along with Trico, Marion and Goreville bringing up the rear at 0-2. Any surprises in the tournament, or has it sort of played out as you expected it would? You know, I think it's kind of played out like I thought it would, you know, maybe outside of Goreville a little bit, but... You know, you got to look at who they played. They played Carterville and they played uh, Hamilton County. So they're going to win some games. And, uh, you know, they lost a lot from last year, but, but Coach Heldon's been down there for, for years and years and does a great job with them. And um, they'll be ready to play today. Uh, you know, I, I think some people maybe were, were surprised at our score last night with the Carterville game. You know, they beat us 19 and, and they really, really put it on us with the Marion tournament. And we did some things and switched some things up last night. And, you know, They've got a kid named Smith that hit eight threes in that first session yesterday, and uh, we did some things through, put a freshman on, and did a really good job. But, uh, you know, I think some things are going to happen today that may surprise me a little bit. But yesterday kind of went as planned. You know, I, I knew Hamilton County was going to be right there, and they play uh, they play Carterville today at 2 o'clock, so I'm looking forward to watching that game and see who comes out on top there. And, uh, uh, and you know, just go further, like I said, we, as far as we go, we got to go one game at a time. And, uh, and, you know, don't look too far ahead. You know, right now our focus is going to be on Trico, and then, and then later today we'll, we'll start looking at Hamilton County. All right, we'll give you an easier question. Now you can answer this one. It's our social media question of the week, and this week's question is, what is your favorite concession stand food or drink to get at a high school basketball game? Wow. I would say some nachos with jalapeno. Nice. That's not always an option at some places. Some places don't put out the jalapenos. They just put out the nachos with cheese. That's right. Hey, we've got it all. We've even got super nachos. That's the taco <sighs> meat, jalapenos, anything you want to put on them. So who makes... I let, I let, those, I let those, the parents and, and some of my a buddy of mine take care of that concession stand, and uh, I just sit back and try to coach. So does Hedgehog make these nachos? <laughs> Hey, my man, my buddy Hedgehog is in charge of the concession stand, and he means business. So I just stay out of his way. <laughs> Sometimes that's all you can say, Andy. We appreciate the time this morning. I know you're busy with the Rangerette Christmas Classic, but good luck to the Rangerettes today. Thanks a lot, guys. Appreciate you having me on. Always a pleasure. That's Andy Sloan, and Hedgehog does mean business wow. with the the Benton Rangerettes concession stand. And you can rest assured the Super Nachos are delightful uh, if he is in charge down there. So yeah. delish. There Not you go. Bad, yeah. Sometimes that's all you can say. Of course, we need to talk about the Mascuta Holiday Tournament on the girls' side. We'll have Jeff Lonnen talk about the Lady Rams' efforts this week up there. And unfortunately, uh, they were eliminated yesterday. They had a close game 
Which day am I on? on Freeberg forty three forty. Yeah, I was looking for the other scores and I messed up somewhere. Yeah, Cost that'll Belleville happen. East and Freeburg. Right. What I do with That's that? It's a tough tournament. It's a huge scoreboard. There it is. I see it now. Sorry about that. But uh, looking at it, Altoff beat Oakville. Altoff struggled with Oakville yesterday, 48-42. Yeah. Altoff didn't play well in the first game either. No, and and when you look at that, you have to in the consolation bracket, you if you win one of the first two consolation games, you have to come back and play later that night. Uh, but Altoff beat Oakville, Freeburg beat Lady Rams. Just today we'll talk about that with Jeff Lawn and O'Fallon beat Westland. Uh, Centralia got past Northwest Academy, so they they went back later that night, though they lost. Uh, Central beat Highland yesterday, Modern Day over Belleville East, West over Carbondale, uh, Nashville twenty four better than Mascuda, no surprise. Altoff beat did beat Freeburg forty eight thirty nine, and O'Fallon forty seven forty nine winners over the Annies. So. Pretty well in all Metro East tournament now as Centralia and Mount Vernon both eliminated after yesterday's games. We'll talk with Jeff Lonnen, head coach of the Lady Rams, about that after the break here on the Saturday Sports Show, powered by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. It's what health care should be. Back after these. There's a good reason why Second Chance Auto has been in business for 33 years. They believe in doing business the right way with honest deals. It's the only way they know. And thanks to Second Chance Auto, you don't have to head out of town to get financing. They offer bank rate financing to everyone. Yes, everyone. You'll find a great selection of quality vehicles with three-month or 3,000-mile warranties. Come see why they've been successful for 33 years at Second Chance Auto. Route 142 East in Mount Vernon. Call 244-4582. If you can't pick us up where you live, move, move. This is WMIX, Mount Vernon, Marion, another Withers Broadcasting Station. When you hear the warm, inviting sound of a crackling fire, what comes to mind? A rustic campground? A cozy cabin? How about the new Good Samaritan Regional Health Center? Our new family lounges feature a lot of comforts you might not expect. Things like this. No, that's not a babbling brook or serene stream out in the countryside. It's a two-story waterfall located right here at Good Samaritan. And that's not the only way we're raising the bar for patient comfort. We've added lush healing gardens, as well as wall after wall of beautiful artwork, all designed to create the perfect healing atmosphere. And if all this sounds like music to your ears, we encourage you to check us out. Chances are, we're not too far from where you are right now. The new Good Samaritan Regional Health Center. Raising a hospital, raising the bar. Hi, this is Joe David Cummins, President of Community First Bank. By now you have heard about our new One Checking product. The new One account is a high interest earning, free checking account designed for everyone. Unlike other banks that pay interest on higher balance, this account pays interest on all balances. From high schoolers to Warren Buffett, One will work for you. You can talk to one of us at 244-3000 and learn about the details. One, exclusively at Community First Bank. You will be one happy customer. Member FDIC. And we welcome you back on the Saturday Sports Show, WMIX and WMIXSports.com. It's powered by Crossroads Committee Hospital. It's more than hospital. It's what health care should be. That's Danny Zerwinski. I'm Chris Hugo here until 10 o'clock. We're in hour number two as we talk Lady Rams basketball with head coach Jeff Lonnan. Coach, good morning. How you doing, guys? You all doing pretty good. And under the circumstances, I know you wish uh, to be playing today. Lady Rams basketball, of course. Uh, Bow down, or I guess go down to Freeburg yesterday. Forty three forty was the final on that one. But all in all, from the start, I mean, a tough draw with Belleville East. We talked about it last week, and then a, a Freeburg team that you match up well against, but you come up just a little bit short yesterday. Well, the, the first round draw was a tough one, but you know we we did okay. I mean, I know the final score was what, fifty to thirty four, but really, I mean, we had that thing tied in the second half at a couple points. You know, so, I mean, we we just got down to the end in the last few minutes and we had to press and, and kind of take some chances. And, you know, it was a seven- or eight-point game, and, you know, you realize you're not going to catch them if you don't try to do something different. And we tried to do something different, and then they they went on a big run and burned us. So, you know, we competed very well against them, and we were, we were within five, six, seven, the whole three-and-a-half quarters. But, you know, that's, I guess if there's anything... 
such as a moral victory, that might be one because they are pretty good. I mean, they're they're they really are. They they have suffered three or four losses this year, but that's to like Edwardsville and and uh, East St. Louis, and they just came off a big win against Belleville West, and you know that's a different league over there. You know, and they're big schools, big numbers, depth, you know, lots of different things that uh, that we don't necessarily experience over here in this part of the state. Then we had a really disappointing loss yesterday. That was that was a bad loss for us. That was just that, that's a game we got to win. <clears throat> and uh, there's just no, there's really no excuse for for losing the game. But you know, sometimes those things happen. They came out in a big wide three two zone, and you know that's not something we've seen a lot of this year. And when that happens, you got to be able to shoot it, and you got to be able to penetrate the gaps and get it in there. And we didn't do either one very well. And they took our post player away for the most part. And, you know, we just uh, the people who uh, who normally make shots for us just were cold yesterday. Just, you know, we found ourselves kind of stale offensively as a result, and you know, we ended up losing the game. But um, you know, you can't put too much into, into a loss like that. Too you know, that's a tournament that's not going to hurt us any. Not a conference game, not hurt us any conference down the road. Just just like to pick up a couple wins for your record wise anyway. There, but just didn't happen. Of course, the Lady Rams are off now until January the 7th, if I'm not mistaken. You'll travel to St. Anthony in a makeup game. All this time off, what do you do? Do you, do you just give the girls some time off to enjoy the time off from school? Do you get right back in the gymnasium? How do you handle uh, this type of situation, knowing you have such a long layoff like you do every other year? Well, the fact that we've lost two in a row now kind of resets my mind a little bit. I mean, I, I was hoping to you know go into the new year with you know, a win or two out of this tournament under our belts, but... You know, when you when you enter a new year with you know a two a two game losing streak, you know it, it puts you in a little bit different state of mind. You start to wonder, what, you know, if you should adjust your practice, you know, situation or not. So we're going to take it one at a time. We are going to practice today. I think uh, you know, normally because had we done well and under the circumstances, they might have got a day off today or whatever. But well, we would have been playing, I guess, today if we had done well yesterday. But we are going to practice today and. 10 o'clock, and then we're going to see how that goes. We're going to see how we practice, and we're going to see how we uh, compete there, and uh, we'll adjust it from here on out. But as as the schedule sits right now, we do have our schedule for the New Year's Day off, uh, and uh, also the second. So they'll get a couple days there as long as we think we practice well, and we're doing the things to correct what we've heard us this last couple games, and and then we'll look forward to that January uh, 7th game versus uh, Effingham St. Anthony up there. Long time between games, it seems like. I mean, that's going to be a lot of practice time to get something done. I guess it would be in a, a term would be Coach Lonnon's boot camp to get ready for the second half of the season with all that time off. Yeah, I mean, look, the thing that really, I think, sticks with me is we're just not shooting very well. You know, we're just – we've – we just got to get better shooting the ball. And shooting is so hard to get better at in a short period of time. You know what I mean? I mean, a kid's shooting ability develops over the course of their, you know, their careers. You know, I mean, cause that goes way back to third or fourth or fifth grade whenever they start. So it, if you're shooting it and you're cold, you can't make anything right now, it's just very hard to shoot yourself, you know, out of it in, in three or four days or five days. You know, it just kind of has to happen. And, and, you know, part of me wants to go in there and just conceive every shooting drill, shooting drill that I can for two hours. And you know, I've done that before. You know what? There's very little correlation between that and, and, and just coming out of a shooting slump. It just kind of has to happen. And uh, well, that is one thing we'll work on, but certainly we're not going to go in there. And the other thing you can do is over-focus on it, you know, and I'm probably doing right now. But you can over-focus on it. And, make it too much a point of contention and then it sticks in their minds and gets even worse. You know, it's, a big, it's just a big mental game. So we're going to try to do our best to get better shooting the ball, uh, whatever that takes here in the next week or so. And then uh, we'll scrimmage a little bit. We'll give them a couple days off, like I said, and, and then we'll see what happens uh, coming up here on the S7. Of course, seventh against St. Anthony, a makeup game, the one that was postponed back on December the 5th. Uh, then you have Christ Our Rock Lutheran coming in on the ninth. We'll talk about all of that, and of course, over the coming weeks. But yeah. um, 
all in all, Mascoot is still a good tournament to be in in terms of girls' basketball, don't you think? It's tough. I mean, it's you better go in there and you better be hitting on all cylinders. I can tell you that. I mean, you cannot go in there and, and, and have a weakness in an area of your game because it'll get exposed and, and uh, you'll pay the price for it, you know, as we did the last couple games. Um, you know, I think if you go there, you just got to be willing to understand that the reason you're going there is to get see some different competition and to see some tougher competition that's normally on your schedule. And if you do lose or get beat, you have to be willing to rationalize in your head that it's not you know, the end of the world. And it really, in the long run, doesn't mean a whole lot in terms of you know, championships in the conference or whatever. And that's kind of how I've approached it with them. You know, this is, I, I, you know, I, I think when you're 16 or 17 or 18 or whatever, I'm not sure that, you know, when they go to a tournament like that, I'm not sure they're really aware of how great those teams are that are around them over there. There's 16 of them over there, 16 teams. And, you know, even the, even the teams who are down, you know, like, you know, Central has been down a little bit. You know, they, they, they're just getting better all the time. They look pretty good. You know, like Carbondale was over there. You know, Carbondale in our comp was pretty good. You know, they, they stepped their game up, played pretty good. Won a close when we were over there yesterday. I think it was yesterday or the day before. Oakville, you know, a team that everybody knows has been down a little bit. Listen, Oakville came up and almost beat Altoff, you know. And I'm telling you, Altoff is not bad. I mean, I watched them play, and they're going to be a low in the next few years because they're starting two freshmen and, and a sophomore, and, and they're going to be good. And, and they're not bad right now. So, you know, even the teams who have been down, you know, here the first month or so are, are tough. They're tough. They're, they're very well coached. And you better be ready to play. You know, that Freeburg team, they only, I think, had about three wins all year. But they're very well coached. And, and they came to play, and they came with a game plan, and they came and they competed. So that tournament, there is nobody you could draw. Everybody tells me we get such a bad draw in that first round. But... There's nobody we could draw that wouldn't be tough. So we go over there and we do it to see tough competition, different competition. And I think in the end, it hopefully makes you better. Our final question of the week will make you better. It's our social media question of the week. And this week's question is, what is your favorite concession stand food or drink to get at high school basketball games? All right. Um, well, I'm sure Sloan probably said nachos. Yes. Yeah. Um, Hugo would probably say pretzels. No, nah, they don't offer those at most concession stands. I just went with what I know is always there, and that's Sour Punch, sour punch Straws. Uh, if they did offer them, that would be your choice, though. Actually, probably pizza. Well, I think no. <laughs> I just, that makes you too bloated. And, you know, do I care, when do I care about being bloated? I, I'm very, I'm a pretty simple guy. I, you know, I'm, I'm pretty much just popcorn and like a water, or you know, a diet coke. Yeah, you know, I'm big on popcorn. I really love popcorn. Um, and you know, there's varying types of popcorn depending on what gym you go to. You know, some popcorn at certain gyms you just can expect to be too salty. You know, some put too much of that butter imitation on it. I'm gonna tell you that. Go to others, and there's no salt at all. You got to salt your own. Every gym's popcorn is different, and that's what I kind of enjoy about that. But I will tell you this: Marvin makes great popcorn at Shagnut Gym. Probably the best popcorn I have anywhere I go. Well, there's no doubt about that. Of course, he has new po- new equipment to work with now, so it's even better. Yeah, it is, and, and I'll tell you what: he really does. In all seriousness, seriousness, he does a great job up there. In that's one of the people behind the scenes for both boys and girls athletics that, uh, you know, he does so much for the, those two programs and beyond. I mean, he's, he runs that concession stand up there. And, you know, that's a, that's a lot of work now. I mean, he has cases. I don't know how many cases of soda he has delivered in that school every week just for these home games. And he's up there for every delivery and to greet the 
to greet the delivery man, and he has a couple of my PE kids come down and load that stuff upstairs. And I mean, that's a guy that, you know, does a really good job and makes a lot of things go behind the scenes up there because concessions are important, speaking of concessions, since we got on it. But I would say this, his popcorn to me is just about number one. Well, it is, and Marvin, of course, does a lot uh, for not having uh, very many tools at his disposal. So, uh, obviously, operates one of the more efficient and uh, well-sourced uh, concession stands in the conference, in, in the area, and if not, the entire state. Jeff Lonnan, we appreciate the time, as always. Happy New Year to you and yours, and we'll talk to you again next week. All right, Happy New Year, guys. Thanks. That is Jeff Lonnan, head coach of Lady Rams basketball. Of course, we'll talk to him next week. That's when we'll dive into... The makeup game with St. Anthony and also talk about Christ Our Rock Lutheran coming to Shagna Gymnasium. That'll be on January the 9th. We'll have that game for you. We'll have other games for you as well as along the way. We need to get to a break here on the Saturday Sports Show. When we come back, we'll have Aaron Wright, IHSA clinician, and the sport of basketball. It's all coming up, cared for by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. It's what health care should be. Back after these. Are you interested in a career in the culinary arts but can never afford the high cost of cooking school? Rin Lake College has a low-cost recipe for success. For as little as $5,500 per year, you can get a quality culinary arts education in your own backyard. That even includes books, tuition, class fees, and supplies. Learn to master domestic fare, pastry, and foreign cuisine in Ina, Illinois. Save thousands on a culinary arts education at Rin Lake College. For more information, log on to rlc.edu slash culinary arts. Here's Jeff Schmidt for Schmidt Chevrolet of Mount Vernon. Right now, you can get up to $4,500 rebate on the 2014 Silverado, which makes that truck the best buy on the market. It blows away the F-150 and the Dodge Ram when you compare standard features, software, and everything that goes into this truck. Why would you want to buy old technology when you can have the latest and the greatest in the Silverado? Schmidt Chevrolet of Mount Vernon, 3423 Broadway in Mount Vernon. A digestive problem can affect every area of your life. But now there's a specialist right here in town who focuses on digestive health. Mayo Clinic trained Dr. Teg Paul Atwal has opened the only gastroenterology clinic in Mount Vernon. Dr. Atwal treats acid reflux, gallbladder problems, inflammatory bowel disease, ulcers, and more. For your appointment with Dr. Atwal at Crossroads Specialty Clinic, call 618-241-9071. And we welcome you back on a Saturday sports show, WMIX, WMIXSports.com. Cared for by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. It's what health care should be. That's Danny Zerwinski. I'm Chris Hugo in studio with you until 10 o'clock. We welcome now, I guess we can just call him our officiating correspondent here at WMIX Sports. He is IHSA clinician, not that one, Aaron Wright. Aaron, yeah, good morning. Good morning. You know, it's a great morning to talk high school basketball, but you guys, besides not having one of the most thankless jobs in high school sports, or, or sports in general, of course, is that of officiating, you guys travel so much through the holidays, and part of why we wanted to have this discussion with you is see how you guys do it. How do you guys not only come up with these assignments from tournament to tournament, but I know some tournaments have assigners, things like that, but how much of a toll does it take to travel to so many tournaments, to do so many different games in such a short amount of time? It is absolutely crazy during the holidays, especially Christmas with all the tournaments. Uh, you have to be a good schedule uh, scheduler and uh, uh, just maneuver your games around where you can get to each place uh, in plenty of time. You don't want to cut yourself short, which uh, most of the time I've never ran into that with any official uh, running short on time to get me to place to place. But it is a madhouse during the holidays in these four days. I, I look at it this way, the scheduling, and explain to our listeners. Some tournaments go with an assigner where they get officials and line them up and have these guys year after year, same slots or whatever. Some tournaments want to hire on their own. Which is easier to do from an official standpoint? Uh, as an official, I would rather an assigner take care of the tournaments because they're in the loop a lot of times. Uh, most of the time, assigner is an official and uh, they're in contact with other officials to assign the other tournaments, and so they all talk. They all talk and know who's working what tournament. We give them our schedule, and uh, it's easier to email back and forth when, when they're in constant contact. So on that standpoint, having an official that is actually working the tournaments with you to have a little empathy and to understand what the, the schedule is like, is it's a, it's a lot more easy to do 
to do it that way. Looking at last night, and you know, and I go to different tournaments like you do, and I go to one tournament, I see a set of guys. I head to the next tournament, I see those guys come in, and these other guys <laughs> go somewhere else. Um, how many games is too many? Is that up to each official, or is that a set limit? Everybody kind of goes by unwritten rule, like in the referee world. Well, uh, you know, when you're getting to three games a day, it, you're it's tough. You know, your first day, you don't want to do too many games your first day. You get wore out for your second, third, and fourth day, and you don't want to do three or four your last day, and then it burns you out. So, you know, I always heard growing, you know, as a younger official, you know, I don't want to do three. I want to do two games in a day. Now I'm, as I'm doing it my 24th year, I don't really want to do, I'll do three day, three games in one day. I don't want to. That's getting a bunch, especially on that third and fourth day when you're tired. My wife has told me, get a hotel in four days because I get grouchy, I get tired. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> it's tough. You know, if you do 10, 11, 12 ball games in, in these four days, you're wore out. It's a long week. How, how much behind the scenes go on? I mean, there's changes all the time. Officials, you know, get hurt, get sick, something comes up. Um, my town that I was supposed to be on this game at this tournament, my town, my school, whatever, got to this game, I need to switch off with another guy and go somewhere else or another game. How often does that happen behind uh, the scenes? Or this it week? happens a little bit. Um, again, being an official scheduling the assignments, you know, you want to stay away from your hometowns, and most officials uh, know where their teams are playing, when, and they stay away from them. There's a little bit. It gets real confusing when you need to get off a game um, because then you're scrambling, the, the somebody's scrambling to find a replacement for you, um, it, and it's just it's just chaotic. So I know they kind of frown upon it a little bit, and... Uh, and there's a little bit of it. There's a little bit of it switching around here and there, but not as much as you would think behind the scenes. You get your tournament games, you get it set, and these assigners that assign the games, you know, they're refereeing at other places too. So if they're not on site and you need off a game, you, there's going to be some aggravation going along if you don't tell somebody and mm -hmm. you try to do it yourself and you screw things up. So once you get your game set, we try to stay light on it, so it's you know, just continuity of the week. Well, I look another thing, too, the new rules and new changes this year. You know, a lot more fouls, a lot more touch fouls called. I am surprised after two days heading into day three of Holiday Hoops how on time the tournaments are running, at least the ones I've been at, as far as officiating. Have you noticed that, too? Yes, I made a comment the other day. I had Centralia 9.15 the other night, and we got started about 9.20. And you can't beat that. I've had that 9.15 game in the past where we've started at 10.15. And then you get home at 1 o'clock in the morning. But they are running on time. They're running very well. Looking at the changes and stuff, the coaches' box, I think by this point we're halfway through the season. Do you see the players and coaches having made enough adjustments, getting used to the new rules and new calls going on? Absolutely. Well, I was sitting there last night watching the Peakneyville tournament, and the couple games that I saw, those coaches are keeping an eye out. Where I'm seeing them looking, physically looking down to make sure they're in the box, and uh, and, and that's a good thing. That. That tells me that the coaches are at least trying to help us out a little bit. And I, and I kudos to those, applaud those uh, coaches for keeping it aware. And don't put, I told a couple coaches, don't put that pressure on us. Take care of it so we don't have to deal with it. There's a lot of people watching, and it just, it just clogs everything up when you have to, have to whack coaches for being out of the box. And it's a silly rule to have to, you know, have to take care of, and they can help us. You know, they can help us out on that, and they're doing a good job of it. Of course, probably one of the things I notice with officiating is probably the lack of respect that officials do get at games, whether it be from fans or, you know, some coaches maybe if they go over the top. But all in all, when you're going from different tournament to different tournament, different gymnasium to different gymnasium, you, you mentioned you start to get a little grouchy after four days being on the road, going back and forth. Does that start to wear on you? Does that make it tougher to put up with that type of abuse? Yes, a little bit, a little bit, and uh, I like to think that I handle it pretty good because I try to keep in, in mind that it's not these kids' fault, it's not these coaches' fault. So, But you do, you get a little edgy, you know, that third, fourth day, especially if you've done 10, 11, 12 ball games, and so, you, you know, your, your nerves are shot a little bit, but 
it's not too bad. And final question for you, because I know you're busy, you got games to watch, games to officiate today and tonight, is what is your favorite concession stand food or drink to get at a high school basketball game? I, I'm a popcorn guy, so I like to get popcorn. And I know some of the schools that have good popcorn. That's kind of silly, but it's funny. I like popcorn. Get it, and it's kind of a ritual sometimes. And getting one that's not got a lot of salt on it. A little plain popcorn, but uh, it's probably my thing. Sester has, I'm, I'm getting ready to go over Sester Day work. I love their hospitality room at Sester High School. It's just one of those hospitality rooms. That, man, they got home cooked meals in there, and you can't beat that. No kidding. They do a <laughs> phenomenal job in the SV hospitality room. Oh, they do. No they do. They, them, those women in there take care of you. They, man, they, some days they have meatloaf in there and mashed potatoes. and I feel, It's like going to Cracker Barrel or something <laughs> to get a meal. <laughs> that is exactly what it's like. <laughs> Aaron, we wish you a happy new year, obviously, if we don't see you before then. But we appreciate you for taking the time and always being informative to us here. I appreciate it. Thank you. That is Aaron Wright. He is an IHSA clinician, of course, in the sport of basketball. But... Pretty well, our officiating correspondent, so we appreciate him for taking time out with us today, as he always does. And, of course, we have a famed head coach coming up next. He is Shane Witzel of the Woodlawn Cardinals. We'll talk about his team. We'll talk about their semifinal appearance today and what they need to do to beat Goreville to get back into the championship game at Sasser. It's all coming up on the Saturday Sports Show, powered by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. It's what health care should be. Back after these. I'm Jeremy Pearson with a look at your next rad weather. Mild today with sun and patchy clouds, high 55. Mostly cloudy tonight, low 33. Rain not too far from the south and east. Mostly cloudy, breezy, and colder tomorrow, high 38. But temperatures will fall in the afternoon. And Monday is looking mostly sunny and very cold, high 22. Next rad weather from WMIX, Mount Vernon, Illinois. Is your insurance deductible mess? Do you have sleep apnea? Call the Medicine Shop Pharmacy to order a new mask or supplies for your CPAP or BiPAP before your deductible starts over next year. Our respiratory therapists will take the time to make sure your mask and supplies are a good fit for your needs. The Medicine Shop is also your number one source for nebulizers and associated supplies. Here's pharmacist and pharmacy owner Eric Black. We have three respiratory therapists full-time. That allows us, with our respiratory care, a great deal of flexibility to take care of everything from ventilator needs for infants down to simple nebulizer needs for a sick child. And, and everything in between, oxygen, CPAP, BiPAP therapy. Our respiratory therapists are wonderful, skilled at that. We look forward to hearing from you. Give us a call. The Medicine Shop is a locally owned business run by local people. Happy holidays from the Medicine Shop Pharmacy, 2339 Broadway in Mount Vernon. It's back. The award-winning WMIX Sports Basketball Showcase has the very best in high school basketball this winter, and Community First Bank is along for the ride. Hi, this is Terry Prosize, a vice president from Community First Bank of the Heartland. WMIX and WMIXSports.com will have the best games involving the Woodlawn Cardinals, Weber Trojans, Waltonville Spartans, Cesar Valero Red Devils, and the Wayne City Indians. Tune in to WMIX and WMIX Sports for the showcase presented by Community First Bank of the Heartland. Welcome back to Personal Banking. Member FDIC. And we welcome you back on the Saturday Sports Show, WMIX, WMIXSports.com. It's cared for by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. It's what health care should be. Our next guest has to be pretty thrilled. 2-0 and in the Cesar Valier Holiday Tournament. Semi-final appearance today on AM 940 with the Goreville Black Cats. He is Shane Witzel of the Woodlawn Cardinals. Coach, good morning. Good morning, guys. Thanks for having me on. Always a pleasure. Thank you for taking the time for us. We know it's a busy time of year for, for coaches and, and, and everybody alike, of course, in the holiday season, but... Right now, Woodlawn Cardinals playing pretty well at Sasser, which in the past few years seems to have been a home away from home. Well, sure. Uh, you know, we've, we've had some pretty good success down there the last few years and uh, played some good quality teams. And we've always felt like that, that this tournament helped prepare us for the uh, second part of our season when we get into our conference schedule and, of course, some of our non-conference opponents. So we think it's a good test. And, you know, if you're, if you're good, you have a good quality team, you're going to play some quality teams. In the years that you're down, uh, you're going to get something out of your term and go on the left side playing against some teams that, that allow you to get better as well. Uh, people have been asking me about Woodlawn this year, especially this week at Sesser, and I tell them the name on the jersey is Veteran. 
But you got a lot of guys that are bright-eyed, bushy-tailed, and wide-eyed to this experience of playing in big tournament games this week. Relative young team for you going heading into the last two games of this tournament. Well, I, you know, I think we're like a lot of teams, particularly with the smaller schools. And, you know, we have guys with experience, but they're all in different roles this year. And the good thing was that they've they've been around and and they've they've seen some of the the games that we played in, some of the experiences that some of the others have had, and. They got some big game experience last year. It's just now a little bit different role, and we're still early in our season. I mean, we've played, I think, uh, seven games or so, so we're still looking for some consistency, and I think that'll that'll be an issue. And we're still trying to develop our bench guys and figure that out. Uh, and I think that's going to be an ongoing process as the year goes on. Ongoing it is. You open with Valmeyer, and, uh, and again, the rust, the holiday rust is what I call it, where that gets chinked, uh, chipped off a little bit. You get a win over a much improved Valmeyer team from years past. And I thought more of a business like effort yesterday against ZR, especially on the defensive end, which really down the stretch to stop your team got helped you get that win against ZR yesterday. Yeah, it did. And, you know, that's one of the areas that we need to continue to improve upon. We've, we've allowed too much dribble penetration and and once they've gotten around us, our rotations and our weak side help hasn't been consistently been there. And, and that's something we need to continue to improve upon. And, uh, you know, overall, it's been it's been okay with where we're at at this point in the season. It's just we feel like we need to progress in, in that area. And, and, you know, it's hard to complain. It would be a good team. That's one of the things I told them afterwards is, uh, you know, there wasn't too much joy, it seemed like, in the locker room. And, and I want them to, to have some uh, – have some fun whenever they achieve a goal, and we beat a good ZR team yesterday, and they're athletic and quick, and we got some veteran guys to play, all seniors that have been around for a while, so we beat a quality team last or, uh, yesterday, and I want them to enjoy that, but still, yeah, I like the fact that they're looking on to the next game already, and they're turning the page and getting ready for this semifinal game. And that semifinal game this afternoon here on WMIX, kind of like taxes, everybody has to pay taxes. Woodlawn seems like they have to play Goreville in the in the Cesar Vler Holiday Tournament. Much different matchup today. Goreville's had two very difficult games. Very athletic, very similar to the teams they've had in the past few years. This seems to be another good matchup this afternoon. Yeah, it will be, and that's one of the things that we, we've tried to get our players to embrace. Is The good thing, besides uh, beating a good team yesterday, was now we're going to get to play two more quality teams, and, and we need to be exposed to that. And, we need to be challenged, and, and I, that will expose our weaknesses. And that's how you learn, uh, is to go through those experiences where things are difficult, and, and whether good or bad, whether win or lose, that's when you really learn about the things that you need to work on and the things that you need to improve upon going forward. And, and uh, the earlier you can get those things exposed, the better. Ideally, you win those games, and you get yourself into a championship game experience, and we feel like that's beneficial moving forward. And, uh, no easy task today. Goreville is very similar in the past. They're athletic and quick, and they try to create a lot of pressure. And they got a very good post player in Snell, and and they have some capable players to go along with them. So we'll have to do a lot of things correctly in order to uh, to win today. Uh, you know, another side topic. This not discussed much this time of year, but the JV side of things. So you're one of those teams that's only had a couple regular season games, and your JV kids are probably chomping at the bit. How hard has it been for your JV kids that haven't played a lot to kind of sit out again another week and have to wait till next week or the week after in order to have a game to play? Oh, I think it's very difficult for them. I mean, their attitudes have been great, and uh, practices have been pretty good. We had a couple of so-so practices before Christmas, uh, but for the most part, our efforts have been good in practice, and and uh, one of the, the good things, I guess, is that we're, we're trying to get a lot of guys in, a, in our games, in our varsity games, to get their feet with with some game experience. And usually most years, I mean, if we play seven, maybe eight kids, um, you know, it's tough to get that many in the game. But right now we've got five or six. Um, you know, bench-wise, there's not a big separation of all those guys. And we need to establish some kind of order in there, and that's what we're trying to do is try to get as many of those guys in the games as we possibly can and still yet win those games. Uh, the most important thing is that we win and move forward. But at the same time, it's something that's discussed pretty heavily between Scott and I about how we're using our bench players and how we're developing those guys. So they're getting some varsity experience, but we're going to get going here pretty good in the next month or so. We're going to play a ton of games, um, so we're going to get a lot of game experience, and we think that's very important. Of course, speaking of the JV and speaking of a busy month and game experience, you guys have announced quite a few 
uh, rescheduled games. Took quite the hit from Mom Nature, of course, in December. You're able to get one of those rescheduled right away in the Oakville tournament. But you lost the game with Weber. I understand that is now rescheduled. You had to move around the Heron game to accommodate them and that Sluky shootout that was snowed out. So you guys will have quite a few games coming up with some of these rescheduled games being announced. Yeah, I mean, if you guys can help get the word out, that would be great. Uh, the Heron game has been moved from January 18th to January 4th, which is coming up um, next Saturday. So that will come up pretty quick, and that will be a big game for us at home. And uh, the Weber game, I think, is the Thursday, January the 16th. And then uh, January the 18th, we're supposed to play Heron. That's typically scheduled to play modern day. So we picked up a few games right in there in that three-week stretch to where we're going to be playing quite a bit, which I think our players are looking forward to. Our final question for you, we know you're busy and we got to let you get going, get ready for the game today, but it's an easy question this time. What is your favorite concession stand food or drink to get at a high school basketball game? Uh, it's got to be popcorn. Um, a lot of places serve good quality popcorn, but Woodlawn Grade School's probably got some of the best around, so I would definitely say... Uh, popcorn for sure now you have to get in line before former player gabe owens because i've seen him <laughs> put away some popcorn lots of nights <laughs> yeah he does uh he does but the the topper for me was coach herb williams he, he liked it so much sometimes he'd eat it on the bench <laughs> <laughs> well, that, well, that happens sometimes sometimes coaches get and, and if you have to sit in your box you can't walk around all you can do is but, sit eating coach i guess well, it was a JV game. He wasn't getting too into it at that point, and it was early yet. So I think he's still trying to finish it off. But I think he really likes popcorn. <laughs> Coach, I know you're busy today. We appreciate you for taking the time for us here on the Saturday Sports Show. And good luck against Goreville. And if it should happen to work out, good luck in what we hope will be a championship game appearance at SVHT on Monday. All right, thanks. Appreciate it. That is Shane Witzel, and certainly not trying to put the uh, kiss of death on him with the radio jinx, but... Woodlawn, of course, battling a Goreville team that has been tested early on in the tournament. Of course, triple overtime yesterday and a close one against Waltonville. So maybe, maybe might be tired. But, heck, we saw a team go three overtimes and come back and win a game on the same day. So with kids' energy levels, that's often a non-factor. At that age, it's not a problem. I just think it shouldn't be a problem. But I think what happens is um, even though they're kids and they're young, it's tough this time of year. It's tough to play when you have games of that high level to come back to back to back to back to come up. They're going to have two games. You know, they had to go down to Wire and beat Wiry Waltonville. Then they had a triple overtimer yesterday with Christopher. And then you throw around, you're going to play Woodlawn, which, of course, Woodlawn's, you know, the name on the jersey. And you walk in, and it's like, oh, my gosh, they beat us all these times. We've got to get back up again. So I think the thing today will be Woodlawn will have to limit their turnovers. And we'll really have to pressure the guards out front because if Goreville's able to get it to Cavins and Snell and Lan inside and Lanham, you know, whatever, those three totaled 60-some-odd points of their 79 yesterday. If they get it inside to Snell and Cavins, it's lights out. Woodline will have to pick it up defensively on the perimeter to keep that pass from going down to the in the post to those two. If it gets in there, I don't know if Woodline's got enough to battle in there or trade fouls with those guys in order to keep them from tearing it up. Well, and it's definitely a case where the Cardinals the one seed. To be the man, you've got to beat the man. So this is Goreville's chance today. And two well-coached teams, two of the stronger teams probably in the South, and should be a great matchup that we're glad to have for you right here on AM 940 today. Also online at WMIXSports.com. We'll talk more about holiday tournament basketball after our final break here on the Saturday Sports Show. It's powered by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. It's what health care should be. Back after these. The sound of bouncing basketballs is heating up high school gymnasiums. Hi, this is Bria Ashby with Community First Bank of the Heartland. Hear all of the twine tickling action on WMIX and watch at WMIXSports.com this winter. Mount Vernon Rams and Lady Rams basketball is in full swing. Find our broadcast schedule and live audio and video streaming at WMIXSports.com or listen to WMIX on game night. It's Rams and Lady Rams basketball powered by Community First Bank of the Heartland. Welcome back to Personal Banking. This is your local State Farm agent, Tony Wilt. I want to thank Mount Vernon and the surrounding area for continuing to support us over the past five years. If you have never sat down with someone to go over your insurance program, let me invite you into our office. Let us show you what working with the industry leader, represented by a local agent, can do for you. I'm located just off 42nd Street. You can reach our office 24 hours a day at 242-1421 or on the web at TonyWilt.com. Thanks again and go Rams! 
All right, Roy Schmidt Chrysler dealer at King City Chrysler Center, Mount Vernon. The 2013 Chrysler 200 sedan could be the perfect recipe of beauty and luxury with an added pinch of safety. The 200 Touring has beauty outside with powerful LED accented headlamps as well as precise chiseled profile. Inside, it's nothing but luxury with leather, heated seats, navigation, and Uconnect technology. With 0% financing or a total of $3,500 in incentives on the 2013 Chrysler 200, we are guaranteed to find a payment perfect for you. Chrysler is so confident in this IIHS top safety pick that they're offering a five-year, 100,000-mile powertrain limited warranty that is unmatched by Honda, Toyota, and Nissan. You must come see our associates at King City Chrysler, 1603 Broadway in Mount Vernon, or shop us online at kingcitychrysler.com. Hi, this is Joe David Cummins, president of Community First Bank. Now is a great time to move your account to Community First Bank. With our new one account offering the highest interest rate in the market, free checking, and CD specials delivered by people you know and trust, why would you not bank with a market leader in Jefferson County? We offer five locations with seven ATMs and have been serving the Jefferson County market since 1906. Stop in and see why our bank is the fastest growing bank in Jefferson County. Community First Bank, welcome back to Personal Banking, member FDIC. Mount Vernon is home to many wonderful people and things, and that includes quality cardiac care from Dr. Ruzek Ibrahim. A skilled cardiologist, Dr. Ibrahim's training and scientific accomplishments have earned his designation as a Fellow of the American College of Cardiology. His services range from preventative care to the treatment of advanced heart conditions. For an appointment with Dr. Ibrahim at Crossroads Specialty Clinic, call 241-9071 or visit in person at 4113 South Water Tower, Mount Vernon. And we welcome you back on the Saturday Sports Show, WMIX, WMIXSports.com, powered by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. It's what health care should be. Final segment of the Saturday Sports Show today. Of course, we're busy today. A 115 pregame, 130 tip. Woodlawn Cardinals, Goreville Black Cats, semifinal action from the Sester Valier Holiday Tournament on the WMIX Sports Basketball Showcase presented by Community First Bank. Of course, a 115 pregame, 130 tip, as we told you. It's on AM 940 and online at WMIXSports.com. Mountford and Rams, meanwhile, don't know who they're going to play, don't necessarily know when they're going to play tonight. We assume a third place game at 6 30 as the Rams finish 1 and 1 in their pool at the Effingham T Town Holiday Tournament. If that is, it'll be a 6.15 pregame, 6.30 tip on WMIX-FM 94.1 online. Audio only at WMIXSports.com. We'll let you know. Stay tuned to Facebook and Twitter for that. So there you go. I I take a look at the various holiday tournaments around the area. Of course, we've been keeping a a close, close watch on all of them locally. Uh, You can find our full scoreboard at WMIXSports.com. We'd read it for you, but we'd run out of time and probably not get a quarter of the way down the list. But... uh, I don't really know that there's any real surprises. I know, you know, if, if, taking a look at Centralia, Madison Prep got a seed based on their finish, of course. Madison College Prep in the Lebanon tournament. You know, they went consolation bracket. They struggled. Centralia, of course, in the semifinal day. O'Fallon shocks Cahokia. I don't know that it, if you're the, just kind of looking at some maybe some shocks. I don't know if you're the Rams that you necessarily you 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 go in there expecting to beat T Town at T Town, but that's that's a tough 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 task, a tall order to ask of anybody. Um, I'm not surprised by Goreville Christopher. Christopher's a good team. Goreville, of course, knocks them off in triple overtime. They're well coached. Both teams were in that one. Um, not really surprised by anything at Pinckneyville. Not really surprised by anything at Vandalia. Just not a lot of surprises. Maybe some. Mm, nah, there's some. Not not a lot. But, but nothing um, that just looks... The Cokia loss was huge. Sure. They had to play in the Annex first time. Um, It's not a problem to play in the Annex. Mm. The Auxiliary Gym, the Annex, it's in training. Pinkyville are about as good as most people. It has a stigma for some reason. I don't know why. doesn't deserve it. Mm, no. Ma- you know, new schools should build an Annex, by the way, in yep. Auxiliary. But, you know, Cokia losing to Centralia, that was... You know, that was a big upset. That was huge. Not sure if O'Fallon has enough for Alton because Alton's pretty darn good. We saw that last year at the holiday tournament, Centralia. 
If you get an Alton Centralia matchup tonight at the arena in Centralia, my goodness, what a crowd that could be. Uh, with if Centralia is undefeated in the semifinals today, you know they're packing the people in, and then tonight if they get they're undefeated going to their own tournament championship, that place will be electric tonight. I think it's Sesser. If it's you know, any of the four teams that make the finals at Sesser, to you know Monday night. Are going to be good. The third place game is going to be really good, I think, as well. Two great matchups, um, you know, next, you know, next Monday or Monday. Duster Thomas shaping up to be more than likely Jersey Villain Jabot, which I think will be very interesting. Pinkneyville only looking at each other again, like you know, old friends at third place game. Uh, Pinkneyville is going to figure out a way to beat Jabot. You know, Jerseyville looked very good yesterday. I saw them. Jabot looked great yesterday. I saw them. Saw Benton team getting a lot better again. They're undefeated when I've seen them this year, too, 2-0. Two um, you know, I, I, that tournament there, you know, you, you pretty well floated to the top who's going to be what and whom and where. You know, I it, it's just not – you look around the tournaments. I mean, El Dorado, same kind of teams are there, Massac, Harrisburg, you know, Union County, Kentucky, who they expected. There's not a lot of shakeups and not a lot of upsets uh, as far as that goes. And um, – you know, th- usually I say after holiday tournament time, you have enough of a record to stand on. We pretty well know your do's and don'ts of your team. But it may take another week or so of games to kind of get people in because everybody missed so many during that snow in December that, you know, teams are still trying to find their way. Like Coach Witzel said, they're still trying to find their rotations. And they're somehow in the semis of the Cesar tournament for the fourth year in a row. It's just that time of year. Well, and, you know, taking a look now at the girls' side, looking at Mascuda. Your final four there is Nashville, Belleville West, Modern Day, and I believe Central. So Central, Modern Day, and one semi. <laughs> That's going to pack them in. And then Nashville and Belleville West, I believe, in the other semi. And, yeah, on the, maybe on the girls' side of the sport it gets a lot of ink, but it's really not a tournament that probably gets the credit it deserves. And I know they had to bring in Northwest Academy, and you kind of look at that and you shrug your shoulders. Um, not ripping on Northwest Academy. Rams will play them on the boys' side, of course. A, a law law focused academy out of St. Louis, but you know, you take a look at that tournament. That is just a strong tournament up and down. Muscuda and the Highland Midwinter get a lot of ink because of who they have and what they have going on. That's, I mean, if you go to Muscuda and do any good, then go into Highland in January and do some good. You've got a pretty good team on your hands. Um, you know, those two tournaments, okay. Heron tournaments have been real interesting. Pinckneyville knocked yeah. undefeated Cesar Valer Walton Ball off first night, Thursday night. Got to see that. Pinckneyville's going to play well. Heron's in the mix there. That's a good tournament for the Lady Devils to get their strength of schedule up a little bit. Of course, that schedule's pretty good for them. You know, the Benton Rangerettes Classic quietly over the years has evolved, improved, lost teams, gained teams, whatever. That's been pretty good as well. So, um, you know, the Jerseyville Girls Tournament, that's a good little tournament as well up north, kind of out of our range, but not radio-wise AM today, but out of our, you know, following, that's another good girls tournament. You know, and some of these girls tournaments are popping up that that have been either around for a while or starting to pop up that have been very good, and it's, it's good to see the girls' side of things get competitive. Well, Matt, too, and, of course, another decent tournament. Salem Money Wildcats will be playing for a title there, if I'm not mistaken. Um, a tournament that's trying to be an up-and-comer is uh, the Mary Mule Invitational, of course, the second annual this year at Fairfield. Uh, and I know that we talk about any time that there's a JV team in there, it's kind of a kiss of death. But, I mean, Heron has their, their own JV. Uh, the Mary Mule Invitational at Fairfield has Nashville's JV in it. But there's worse JVs you could have well, other than Nashville Hornets. And, and, and to defend Heron a little bit, they got stuck. I remember exactly yeah, I remember when that. I got the text was Thanksgiving week. And they had a team pull out. I mean, you're not going to find anybody a month before no. and anything else. So you got to give Heron credit. Their JV team gets in, gets a few games. There are JV teams around, as we mentioned, Coach Witzel, that would love to be playing games sure. somewhere. Because with with the amount of tournaments there are, and the snow that week basically killed about a week of JV games per se, four, five, six days of games, um, you're looking at JV teams that don't have a lot of games in their belt, and you don't get JV games in, you lose experience, you lose chances to be on the floor. And, you know, we'll go in We'll go in from this week of holiday tournaments. You get a couple weeks right back to midwinter, no JV games. And, and one of the things I like what 
the Pinckneyville shootout does at the 1st of February is they allow JV teams to play games. Not everybody there is playing, but they have the opportunity with the auxiliary gym, with some of the junior high gyms around town, that they give that opportunity to JV things. I think if you're going to have a shootout now, which shootouts are crazy because it's hard to fill teams, your best bet anymore is to say, hey, we're going to have these games going on here, and we're going to alternate where your JV teams can play in another gym. Um if you have that luxury, again, if you're building a new school, build an auxiliary gym. And, in fact, i got this. If you're looking for an auxiliary gym to copy, go to Heron. Look at their auxiliary gym. It's as good as any girls' basketball gym could have. You've got a top of level for uh, lifting and pitching, or I should say for baseball and softball. Then you have a bottom level room behind it for wrestling and weightlifting. That is the best auxiliary gym I have seen around as far as being able to host postseason competition. That's what I sure. would Sure. Because, <laughs> I mean, you look at what Heron did there. They had the 3A regional in volleyball a few years ago. Perfect for volleyball. Perfect had for it, was girls' a, basketball. It was a great atmosphere. And, yeah, it'd be perfect for girls' basketball. They I, had, I know they had the girls' basketball regional you know. and memorial gym last year, but that's still they did it right. And if you have aspirations of hosting anything, say you're building a new school and you want to host something, you're going to need that auxiliary gym just in case. I, I just think – I know Pinckneyville's auxiliary gym seats about nine – Eight nine seven eight nine hundred, but the way Heron did theirs with the availability to have seven eight rows of wooden bleachers on both sides, the ability to have a regulation floor, the ability to have for, you know wide open baselines, and then on the on the one of the sides opposite the benches, you have the ability to have an upper floor where it's you know for pitching and hitting cages, and then on the bottom next room is weightlifting and wrestling. You've got to have that. I mean, I you can't have one gym. You wouldn't want your science teacher teaching in the same room divided in half with your English teacher. You don't want wrestling having to tag up with dance team and uh, in the same place. You just don't want to do it. And if there's any way possible, you do that. And I think of all the auxiliary gyms that I've been in, or the second gyms people call them, Heron has the best facility and that one that needs to be copied, if at all possible, by all schools. Well, exactly. And... You know, Centralia has – their annex has somewhat of a stigma about it. I don't know why. It's a nice gymnasium. Um, granted, they, they did not think about accommodate media accommodations. They, they admitted as such when they were building it. Not that that matters, but, I mean, if you're going to host things, that, that will help immensely. Uh, well, Pinyville does a good job. They didn't – you know, building that little thing, that, an auxiliary gym, they didn't think about it, but they have the, they have the perfect fitted tables – with appropriate outlets in places where radio people can go in and do their thing. The Auxiliary Gym in is great for that. They have the ability to do that. You can sit in the bleachers. they got tables that fit perfectly. You sure. put your stuff down, game on, ready to go. Not a problem. Heron, same way. We could go in Heron, go up top on the, where the cages are at, sit above the rail, do the ball game. Not a problem. So it's, it's great. And, you know, when you have that ability to have an Auxiliary Gym or a second gym on site, you don't have to play 10 o'clock at night games. You also have the ability to get more games in quicker. Right. You can throw JV tournaments in like Bell, or like Mascuda does with uh, their tournament. They have a freshman tournament over there. So you have that ability, especially at shootout time, to bring in JV teams and let them play so they don't lose a game when the varsity plays a shootout. Well, and, you know, I, I wasn't ripping on Centralia's annex by any means. They did a great job of helping us out uh, when we were up there and had to go to the annex a couple of times and were more than hospitable. Um, it's just, if you're going to do these things, you have to think about the things that you're not already thinking about, which I know that's oxymoronic to say, but if you plan on hosting anything, and, and why I say that is, it's not just about being able to get the tournament in. You're going to have other teams that need to practice, and if you're hosting an event you only have one gymnasium available, where are those other teams going to go to practice? you going to send them to some of the other horde? Never mind. Anyhow. So there we go. <laughs> no, I mean... Thinking ahead, you, know, you got to think a little bit ahead of things, and you know there are some great games today. Of course, El Dorado, the semifinals at El Dorado, is an electric atmosphere. Centralia semifinals today, especially Centralia playing in the second game this afternoon, that'll be crazy nuts up there. I mean, those two tournaments finish. Carbondale goes on today. Um, Thursday night at 10 o'clock, a team from Georgia, a team in Missouri, still not sure how many people showed up. Didn't know if it's like the tree that fell in the forest, nobody was around, could anybody hear it? But um, Carbondale will wrap up today. Uh, Carbondale uh, has an opportunity to get to a, you know, a title championship plus game, what they used to call it. Um, you know, A lot of tournaments wrapping up. Pinckneyville will wrap up tonight, two-day, four games, 36 hours. 
So Monday you'll have some stragglers. Modern Day has been a very good tournament. I've really enjoyed looking at scores and listening to some of the games on the V, our sister station. So there's still some action going on on Monday the 30th. So, uh, you know, don't, don't fear today's not the end of it. No, there isn't. So you still get a little bit more basketball, of course, on Monday. A quick scoreboard update for you yeah, here on the guy. Saturday Sports Show. As in the El Dorado Holiday Tournament, they're underway. Fairfield defeats West Frankfurt 74-51. The Mules, of course, play for fifth place later on in the EHT. So that's one final in the books. That is from El Dorado. We'll have plenty of scores throughout the day for you on Twitter. We'll put a scoreboard up tonight on WMAXSports.com. We'll do our best to keep you up to date on our broadcast today. Of course, the Woodlawn Cardinals, Goreville Black Cats. It's at Cesar Valier. It's at 115. That's your pregame anyhow on AM 940 and WMAXSports.com. It's the Cardinals. It's the Black Cats. It's a semifinal matchup this afternoon. And then we'll have... The Rams finale tonight from the Effingham to Topless Christmas Classic. Stay up to date on Twitter to find out when and whom they're playing. We'll know after the 12:30 game. So we'll know about 2 o'clock whom the Rams' opponent is going to be at Effingham High School tonight. And what will presumably be, unless basically unless Mattoon shocks the world and beats T-Town, the Rams have the 6:30 game tonight, in which case 6:30 would be your pregame. I'll just or say this. Would be your pre-game. You think playing in other places is tough, allegedly? It's hard to beat T Town, T Town. That's that's the thing to remember. I know there's nothing shaky that goes on at T Town. It's just they're a good basketball program, great place to play, and it's hard to beat them anywhere there, just like anywhere else. Oh, that that is without question. And I think you know that going in. And you know, they they did it smart. I mean, they they're hosting that tournament to their benefit and they play the bigger games at Effingham, the nighttime games, which yep. is a bigger gymnasium and can accommodate more media, can accommodate more people in general. So, I mean, they're doing what they can and, and trying to do it the right way. And you certainly can't fault them for that as they host the first annual Christmas Classic. But all in all, there's a lot of good holiday tournaments in the area, but there may just be too many. I think yeah, that's the thing possibly. About it. Yeah, too many teams, too many JV teams as well. Yep. Sorry, there's a cough button. There we go. Got that out of the way. Of course, we appreciate you tuning in this week to the Saturday Sports Show, our final program in 2013. We'll be back at it, of course, next week and what will be the first Saturday in January. We hope you'll give us a chance next week as well here on the Saturday Sports Show. Powered by Crossroads Community Hospital, we appreciate them for being with us yet again. Of course, next week will be somewhat of a, a layover week. Of course, we know we'll have a game on Monday. That remains to be seen which one, whether it's third place or the championship game on Monday from the Cesar Holiday Tournament. Then, of course, we will also have, I believe, on Friday next week, a makeup game with the Mountford and Rams and the Altoff Crusaders. And then beyond that, we'll have two games on Saturday between the Girls and Boys Showcase. And then we go into full force basketball mode the following week here on WMIX. But would we really have it any other way? Don't we really like nope. just having a game a night? Nope. Want to be I out do. and about. It's that time of year. You can rest in the summer. And that's exactly what we do. Let's see. Multitasking here on the Saturday Sports. We'll look for a scoreboard tonight on WMIXSports.com. Our archives are fully updated up until today's program. We have all of our games on there from the holiday tournaments thus far. Find it at WMIXSports.com. This has been the Saturday Sports Show on WMIX Mount Vernon, a free service from Withers Broadcasting. We'll archive this broadcast as soon as we can after the 10 o'clock hour. We hope you've enjoyed it today. Have a happy and safe New Year. Celebrate it the right way, and we'll be back with you next week.